Hello, my friends. I'm Lucas and you're watching Cold Demons PL. If you like my work, please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel and write some comments. First of all, I would like to mention my wonderful patrons who support my activity. Massive thanks, guys. These are people who believed in my passion, saw something valuable in it and decided to support me. It's really great when you know that there are a few crazy guys in the world who think like you, want to watch what you do and appreciate the effect of your work. This is really super motivating and gives you the strength to continue working. Please don't forget that you can be one of them. Just check my Patreon page and decide if you want to stay with me or go back home. There are different options to join but you need to decide by yourself. Once you join you will be able to surf on my page with no limits, watch and download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other media models, read the articles, watch the videos with no adverts and enjoy other benefits. Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. I'm not pushing but you know, I'd like to make millions from modeling and this is the easiest way. I'm joking of course, but the truth is that it would be great to do this as a regular job. The only way is to build the channel and get new patrons. That's why in each episode I encourage you to support me in my passion. And I realize it's not easy these days, but if you have a few bucks you could drop in my cup, that would be great. Thanks. Ok, as you can see a model from Amusing Hobby comes to my workbench today. And this is another vehicle from the series of prototypes after the KF-51. Maybe you would prefer it to be a real Abrams, but when I saw the announcement of this model, I immediately decided to pre-order it. The construction of the model is very simple, but you must remember that if you want to build this set, check the instructions carefully. I have the impression that the designer was in a bit too much of a hurry when preparing the drawings. This time I decided to start working on trucks because I knew it would be a boring job and it would be best to get it over with as soon as possible. I cut out all the elements from the frames and prepared a long template for arranging the elements. In each frame there is a one element that can be glued to the next one, thus creating the long helper as you can see here. It's much more convenient for me than using a short one because I can focus on a larger number of links. It took me about 4 hours to build both trucks, from cutting out the frame to gluing the last link. For information, if anyone is interested, I used thick Tamiya glue which has a slightly longer drying time. Now going back to the beginning of the instructions, I started working on the hull and chassis. It's not complicated and I just wonder why the producer prepared separate rims for the wheels. Are you sure it couldn't be done as one element? I don't want to believe it. Well, at least we will spend a little more time with the model. It's obvious, and this way the name I'm using will be more memorable. I must admit that the fitting of the model is very good and all parts fit together perfectly. All you need to do is prepare your work properly and construction will go smoothly. Because I plan to make two level base for this model, part of the chassis will be movable. The first wheels will be glued permanently and the remaining ones will be mounted for fitting and proper positioning without glue. First of all I cut off the locking pins from the wheels arms and secondly I glued a piece of wooden stick that is sufficient to hold the arm during positioning. It may not look professional but it works enough. I immediately glued the wheels which will definitely make it easier for me to properly position the model on the stand. Maybe it won't be very convenient, but I decided to install the side covers at this stage. But before that happens, I will upgrade them a bit. 
Since my model will look like a working machine and not a boring prototype, some elements will be treated appropriately. The first is the rear drive wheel cover, I will just cut it off. This way this side view of the vehicle will be diversified by a visible wheel and a larger piece of truck. I will drill out the places of the mounting screws with a 0.4mm drill to make it look as if the screws were forgotten somewhere by the crew. These drills are very useful but you have to be extremely careful because they are very delicate and can break easily. I've already used so many of them, one careless move and we can order new ones. I made scratches along the entire length of the rubber covers with a tip of a hobby knife and bent them with flat nose pliers so that the surfaces didn't look uniform. I'm sure it will look good. It's also worth remembering to wear off the edges because the thickness of the plastic is too visible and there is definitely too much of it for such an element. I covered the periscopes with masking tape and glued them into place. After painting you will probably see the transparency of these elements and I hope that all they will need is a gentle wash. On the upper edge of the side covers you need to clean the space between the rivets because the connection line of the production molds is visible there. An annoying detail. Now the covers are ready so I mount them on the model. As I said before the fitting is very good so there is no problem with setting them properly. Assembling of the turret is as easy as the hull. The elements fit perfectly so work is very smooth. The barrel of the machine gun or perhaps more of 20mm cannon was slightly improved by drilling out the holes in the radiator and muzzle brake. A simple trick that definitely improves the quality of this element. It's a pity that I completely forgot that I had a metal bar and 3D printed elements in the model to replace the plastic ones. Well, at least I showed how to improve the appearance of the plastic part. To preserve the color of optoelectronic elements I used PVA glue to mask the glasses. I don't know if it will pass the test and after some time we will find out whether this method was good. Of course I painted these parts in transparent color from the inside. The remotely controlled weapon section on the turret's roof consists of several elements and is generally not complicated but requires some attention when cleaning the parts. I'm wondering whether to install additional hydraulic or electric cables which will enhance the appearance of this element. I also have empty shells from master model prepared which will be lying around while I paint the model and weather it. I glued the previously prepared elements to the turret. There weren't much of them and I still have the impression that compared to the standard Abrams it's a bit poor, but that's the nature of this vehicle. The producer has equipped this model with a metal bar with an impressive 3D printed muzzle brake. The entire section consists of several parts and its construction takes a couple of minutes.
it's worth sanding the bar with fine sandpaper to make its surface more matte. This will make applying the primer easier. I decided to add the towing cables from Eureka XXL to the rear of the tank. Regardless of the modernity of the vehicle, tow ropes will probably remain a permanent element of the equipment because they are the simplest solution when the machine needs to be evacuated from a muddy battlefield. I copied the arrangement of the rear wall of the hull from a photo I found while searching for materials about Abrams. In my opinion this method of mounting is interesting enough and is a nice change on flat surfaces of the vehicle. The shackles are from RB model and I made the mounting on the right side from a regular paper strip. The same picture was a base for some upgrading of the rear rubber fender which is divided into characteristic stripes and here I destroyed this element in a controlled way. I love such details because they add much more life to the miniature, make the whole thing look more realistic and these small variations attract the eye. To diversify the entire body of the vehicle, which is quite flat and with few details, I decided to use my supplies and add some antennas. The most sophisticated is a piece from Master Model. There are also two resin antennas for the turret and a metal one for the pair on the back. Of course, this is just for fun, but you must admit that it looks impressive and suits this vehicle. As if these damages I made on the rear wasn't enough, I damaged the side fenders even more and removed several mounting screws. Of course, I drilled the holes with a small drill. This flat area on the turret behind the machine gun station is perfect for carrying stowage. That's why I installed the wire handles on it so that additional transport belts and ropes can be tied here. I'm going to use this space and add some extra toppings later. The handles were glued with VMS black CA glue so I needed to do some cleaning with debonder. Just if anyone would like to ask. At the end of today's episode I built a simple box made of balsa plank. This time I used a slightly different balsa wood than usual and it was a good solution. The material is harder and more resistant to any damage during processing. I glued everything with black VMS CA glue and added a cardboard floor to the bottom and glued supports inside to make sure nothing unexpected would happen. I filled the entire box with styrofoam cut to size. Once again I used my super machine, the hot wire cutter. I don't need to tell you how good it is to have such equipment in our workshop, especially if you are building bases for the models and you need different sizes of materials to fill the space. It has some size limitations, but it's not a big problem. I filled the entire box with foam and glued it with PVA glue. To strengthen it, I pressed a dozen or so toothpicks to make a strong bond between both layers of styrofoam. I glued a piece of cork on top which will serve as a base for the asphalt.
Now I trimmed the edges a bit because I knew more or less what height the lower level should be. I used modeling clay to cover the styrofoam which is a base for the mud that will appear later. Applying clay can be done using a tool or your fingers. It's worth remembering that it gets a little dirty so gloves are recommended. Of course as always I forgot to put them on. I don't need to make perfect surface so this is why you can see a bit rough method I use. But don't worry because there will be heavy mud everywhere so this clay finish is not as important as it may seem. This is what the initial composition looks like and it's absolutely not a finished base and I still have a lot of work to do to make it look as it should. The model is ready for painting and also preset on the box. Its size corresponds well to the size of the box and I hope it will look awesome in the end. In the next episode I will be painting this giant and maybe I will also work on the base. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and write some comments. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!